What up? So there's several things, several things that I want to discuss, talk about, verbalize, but we'll see how much of it gets out. It's translated through this filtrate of uh, linguistics and syntax. <clears throat> but we'll we'll start here from this jumping point. We'll leapfrog here. Ribbit, ribbit. With this, with this dude. Sensei Al Bob at uh, Dreamy Dream, Dreamy Dreamland with Sensei Al Bob is the YouTube channel. Highly recommend it if you if you are into uh, getting real and going within. If you are in shamanics and Diving into your subconscious. Uh, ugh, I don't like using these words that describe these things, but essentially the subtler realms of your mental sphere. Then this guy is the guy you want to look into. This guy is a part of my life. Um, not so much that I've talked with him like one-on-one uh, -on -one necessarily. I mean, we've we've chatted with, through uh, emails and whatnot, and uh, responding like through uh, YouTube videos and whatnot. But There's a lot that has to happen first before we connect on that level, which is going to happen. But, and this is also kind of why, like, I, I watched, you know, what I'm about to show you of this, what he's about to say, which is, which isn't very long at all. <clears throat> but essentially, I just wanted to, like, have this as the base here for whenever I start to venture out in person, I guess you could say. To just show where the focus is going to be, for me at least. And that's not to say that in some instances, you know, we aren't, we, we ain't gonna <laughs> get a groove on, get a flow on, get a party on, but There's a time for fun and there's a time for work. And when I say work, you know, I'm talking about work as in whenever shamans use that word. Whenever uh, healers, like true healers, use that word. What they're talking about is the work that they are, that they have agreed upon. That, that just happens, but it's a work that, in that, you realize that you're working for a higher, higher cause, a higher good. Essentially, like, you're aligned with truth, and you're engaged with that. So it's a redefining of that word, essentially, which which is what we have to do here. Um, right, we have to re redefine these words that have been uh, we've been giving we have been given meanings to that don't necessarily match up with the life experience. 
So we have to engage within the experience, engage within the felt knowingness of the moment. And within that engagement, you will redefine what reality is to you, what real is to you. You will, you will recognize the fallacy within a lot of these words, within a lot of the linguistics that you have been taught. <clears throat> okay, so... How this, how this guy started out this video, he started talking about a dream that he had. Um, basically, a bioluminescence that happened all around him. At first, within this dream, he thought it was a, uh, a nuclear explosion, which... In the times that we live in right now, it's hard to tell what is actually real and what is actually uh, have, has been scripted and uh, has been made up for us to believe in a Hollywood uh, movie, essentially, for us to believe in. But with the nuclear stuff... Um, I can tell you that, yeah, that's, that, that stuff is real, and that stuff is very low level, it's very low level, it, it's high level in the sense that, you know, most people aren't able to comprehend or able to engage with the type of energy that is nuclear or atomic, but there's a, uh, there's a level of energy that is well beyond that because it's it's instantaneous and it's within us all. But in the times that we are in right now, we are working with uh, essentially dumbed down, numbed up humans utilizing certain instruments and technologies that they have uh they should not be even playing with because they they do not understand what's going on within themselves to be able to understand and overstand these these energies and essences so because of this they are caught up in their I don't want to use the word necessarily egotistical, but yes, it's egotistical in the sense that it's a false sense of self. It's a false sense of reality. And so they are engaged with the lower dimensions of beingness. They are caught up in fear and survival and power. And so, we have had to been there, have had to be there, whenever they try to destroy everything. To neutralize. <sighs> so, yeah. In, in his dream, he said that he was uh, in another body. He wasn't himself, even though he had his uh, certain features of himself, like his beard and his eye uh, eyebrows. But it was a different body. Essentially, he was describing himself in a... Uh... Hmm. I, I don't want to use those kind of terms. Like certain Nordic... Or certain alien terminologies, but essentially you got to realize that within every dream that you're not completely lucid within, 
uh, it's going to be a reflection of your inner state, of your uh, belief systems that you, ha that you hold on to still. So you're going to be working within that construct. So this is what was happening within him, within his dream. But he was also experiencing like uh, a lot of times with dreams, they can be like uh, prophetic dreams. So this is kind of like what it was like for him right now. Right now, describing this, uh, this light that happened, uh, brilliance of light everywhere, and then instead of a shadow uh, happening from this light, he he saw like all spectrums of uh, the rainbow and all spectrums of light and colors. And like like I recommend with everyone, like with their dreams, like go with the feeling because this is the message here for you and your dreams specifically. It's the feeling. So if you can remember remember the feeling of the dream, that's going to be the message that you need to take in from that dream. The message of why you're having this dream. So the feeling for him was... Uh, Basically, deep love, love's co-creation, and that this time is uh, emerging of a uh, pronounced increase in the love fluctuations within everyone's hearts. So I will describe this... Uh, what brought, what came to mind for me whenever he described this immediately was a, a deep friend and teacher and hmm, words fail to describe the significance of this person. But this person had an experience where within their glade, in their sphere, in nature, all of life was lit up with luminescence, much like how Sensei Al describes in his dream. Everything became a brilliance of color and accentuated to the nth degree to where it was uh, the most beauty that you could draw out of life here on this plane. And what was this friend's response? Please Turn it back to the way it was. I appreciate the experience and, and what you are and what you have to offer, but you have your own bigger glade, larger sphere of awareness and reality to attend to. Please. Put your focus on that. Because everything is perfect here as it is in, in my perspective. It's really hard to put certain experiences into words, and I've had these these experiences as well. And uh, every time I have them, um, I am within a state where bring back the light. I am in a state where I am in um, 
non-attachment. So no matter what presents itself to me, um, you could say physically or mentally or spiritually or metaphysically, I am um, within deep, deep gnosis and in a union with, with an attunement with myself. And when I say myself, I mean the self. So if things present themselves to me, I, I let it be known that I appreciate that for what it is. But I, this me, this little me, will not engage with it and entertain it. Because the focus of where I'm at right now and the learning that I'm engaging, it's within. This is where I'm, I'm diving into. So anything that tries to pierce my awareness on the outside, I, I let it be known where I'm at. So it can, it can do whatever it wants to do, but it's not going to have any effect on me. Because of where my awareness is in that state, and this is this is essentially where uh, you're going to come face to face with whenever you deep shamanic work, whenever you do intense uh, plant spirit medicine work, you're going to come uh, into engagement with these things, and it's up to you if you want to be caught up in the awe of the moment and all of the pretty lights and and geometrical shapes and forms that's going to be before your eyes or if you want to close your eyes and go into the void into the depths within and experience a, a communion of everything from going deep within you eventually kind of like uh flip-flop <laughs> I don't know what the terminology is it's kind of like a donut uh, going from the inside to the outside like you go so far inside that you you experience all of the outside you'll, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about if you've experienced anything like that the only way to is through you have to go inside and then you realize what is quote unquote outside outer space is inner space it's your space it's the space that you decide it is it's your mental space your reality sphere it's what you choose it to be what you create it what you choose in the moment it's how you feel in every moment it's what you feel And that dictates what you will experience on the quote-unquote outside. Alright, so let's see what this guy has to say here. Right after... <laughs> right after a sip of my mead. That are spiced. And um, it's up to you. But at least you got the monkey off your back. And if you don't get back on, on the merry-go-round of the monkey uh, on this trip, um, and you'll have a, a way, more gentler way to get from here to there, but there will still be... Um, Challenges and opportunities to, to, you know, get back on the monkey wagon. And that's where we are right now. You know, we have great opportunity. Um, things are changing. Yeah, even though this is going to be a short little uh, thing that I show of him, I'm going to stop it several times. Uh, yes. There, there's going to be much opportunity, and this opportunity springs forth from the inner 
knowingness that is happening within so many people, the changes that are happening within people. So we're going to have opportunity to choose truth or to choose the narrative we've been given. Because right now, especially right now, uh, the uh, hmm, the pol polarities are increasing exponentially right now, and uh, if you haven't noticed, <laughs> it's going to be coming. I always wonder if I should talk about certain things or not. Because there is a script to all this, but everyone also has their own individual scripts that they constantly write up for themselves, but is also constantly influenced by the collective script that... Uh, I don't, I'm not going to use the word powers that be because that's uh, too vague and I've been very vague in my life as of uh, recently, basically as I am why I've uh, started talking and coming out, the more clarity I'm able to uh, bring forth, uh, outer and inward, so I mean this stuff is helping me just as much as, you know, and I'm not even, like, my focus isn't even on, uh, bringing clarity or, uh, bringing information to other people, like, uh, mainly, I'm, I'm doing this, yes, as an experiment, yes, as a test to see the response, but, uh, as a uh, device of healing, of allowing myself to express and, and to listen back, to to realize what I really sound like, as opposed to what I always thought I sounded like, or what other people, other, <laughs> I don't want to be derogatory, but unfortunately we live in a world where most people are very, very indoctrinated and caught up in the script and the illusion. And so these are the people reflecting ourselves, reflecting who we are back to us through their dirty lens. So if we uh, go by what, what these people are projecting back, then how we see ourselves is going to be very warped compared to who we actually are. And I'm, I'm speaking about authentic people. People who will be listening to this probably. Because I'm not doing this YouTube stuff to, you know, hashtag uh, fucking subscribe to my channel. I, I don't... <laughs> As I've said before, like, I don't give a fuck about, uh, quote-unquote, my channel. Like, I'm just trying to share and see who relates and who gets anything from this. And if anyone does, then the engagements that we can have and uh, the growth that happens. It's exponential, the, the growth that happens. But also realizing the times that we live in, the constructs in the powers at play that are at work. And uh, between now and that singularity, I hate using that word, but um, between now and then, um, all I have to do is... Uh, Breathe 20% in, then breathe 30% out, and go into state, and um, prepare, you know? And that's why, as the cadre... Okay, so several things were said there. 
uh, this breathe 20% in, breathe 30% out thing. And, and this is, if, if you uh, look into this guy's channel, like this is what he uh, starts you off with before he, what he called going in the state, which is uh, going into the meditative state, going into the dream state. Uh, and, and doing that with, within lucidity and awareness of what you're doing. And this guy is very, very adept and very good at doing this and guiding people. I'm not someone who uh, really, and I made another video with this guy and, and where I said like, I, I kind of gave my, uh, I think I, I called it guided dream time was the, uh, the video that I made. So check that out if you're interested in this guy and anything with uh, uh, how he guides you in the dream time and what that, what that experience is like and what that was like for my experience. But the, the breath work that he's trying to guide you into is basically just getting you into a certain uh, pattern, a, a wave, a brain wave. And it's a little confusing with the 20% in, 30% out. So <laughs> it's confusing and, and he doesn't describe it exactly how you should do it, but that's, that's the beauty of it because it's up it's left up to the individual to decide how they choose to engage their breath for themselves before they enter into this uh, guided meditative state and this is what it's all about here is finding what works for the individual every everyone has their own unique perceptions and modes of awareness and engagements what's going to speak to them so this is why it's very wise to kind of leave leave a little bit up in the air to where people can play with it and find out what works for them whenever you guide someone into something guide them but also leave enough uh play to where they can find out what works for them you don't want to just be, you know, all commando and like, oh no, this, 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 you got to do it this way. want us to work on, um, and it's not going to happen, you know, I have no idea when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen relatively soon, like I said, pretty much between now and January of next year. So yeah, he said the word singularity, and this is kind of a word that's thrown, been thrown out and uh, uh, occulted. Like, essentially, all of our reality has been occulted, and so we have to uh, understand the esoterics from the exoterics that we have been given, and unoccult, de-occult, all, all this fucking shit, all of our reality, basically. So when he says singularity, he's talking about a singularity of human consciousness uh, benefiting for the good of all. But whenever most people hear the word singularity, they're going to think of artificial intelligence and the singularity of connecting that with uh, the biology of the human form. Which is going to happen is has already happened to uh, well uh, <laughs> what do i talk about what do i say uh it's it's happened time and time and time again right around you could say seven to nine cycles that we've been through this fucking shit and there have been many levels of the reset So that we don't remember. Mm. 
Mm. So, so it you could say it's already been decided, but essentially, uh, the tr the true humans on this plane, uh, right now in this time period, where we're at, they've uh. They've dreamt a dream that has been so pure that it has been, you could say, adopted or adapted, has been accepted into uh, the reality that we are coming into. So we are going to, we are already experiencing things so quickly that uh, few or are, a lot, most people aren't able to keep up, but, you know, for the ones that are, they're able to see the side effects of it, say Mandela effect, say uh, the the extreme changes in nature and the cycles of the seasons, the shifts in reality and awareness that are happening collectively and individually, and how without even taking anything, any kind of uh, aided or sp uh, plant spirits, uh, life is becoming very, very trippy right now because of uh, the accelerated state that we're in right now. So yes, we are going to experience a, you could say like a cyborg type state of beingness, a, uh, interconnectedness with this uh, quote-unquote AI which is not anywhere close to AI it's a uh, fake pretend AI because they the creators of this AI don't understand uh, what true AI is because they want to be in control of it <laughs> that, that's essentially what it is if you have any kind of control over something, there's there's not really an intelligence there. It's a limited intelligence. There's a cap to it. Exactly like the cap they have been trying to do with all of us. And why we are in the state that we're in right now. Because they want to capstone and, and create a pyramid within this. infinite realm that's all shapes and no shapes at the same time it's all and nothing at once there's no controlling this and if you seek power and control then you have been caught and and now we we will <laughs> not I, we will go into this in later videos because of where i'm headed with all of this which is in the same direction of where this guy is headed with all of this. But hopefully I can bring clarity to this guy and uh, to all of us, to the cadre. Of what truth is here, here and now. And also, I want to speak just real quick about um, waking up to a lot of this stuff. You have to realize where you're at right now, what time period we are in. You have to realize your surroundings. You are surrounded by ignorance, a sea of ignorance. So if you try to wake people up, you can, you're going to get... All of that thrown back at you, and you, you, it's good. We are but right now. We are living within a witch hunt. If you haven't already noticed, this is kind of a theme that, have, that has been popping up recently. Is this witch hunt theme, and this reemergence of this? We are living within this right now, and this is kind of also why uh, we have been allowed to start speaking more without. Uh, all that much censorship, but this censorship is coming in hardcore now. And 
we have outed ourselves, the ones that have spoken up and put themselves out there. And I knew this from the get-go, which is why I didn't for a long time. But then when, once I started seeing certain people do it, say like uh, the catalyst for many of us, Zenatmian, then I started realizing not only like fuck it, but also not only fuck it, not only it's now or never, but this isn't a lost cause. And that's why I fucking started coming out. Because I, I realized that this is not a lost cause. Even if the interwebs is taken down, I feel like enough of us are connecting that even if that does happen, we have already done a lot of work in connecting with each other and connecting inside of ourselves. That, that has done a lot of good collectively and individually. So yes, we we are going to experience, uh, and we we are experiencing a integration with this uh, t technology, the science, scientism. Because science, in and of itself, has been hijacked. If you haven't noticed, anything good, any kind of good movement, eventually gets hijacked and corrupted. If you haven't noticed. <clears throat> and, and if you want to know <laughs> where the, pl the places that we have been with artificial intelligence quote-unquote artificial intelligence. But but you're not going to find out the information about artificial intelligence, like true artificial intelligence, except with uh, certain... There are few, uh, few things that you can find. There is one anime I can think of. I can't think of the name right now of it. But they just... They... Okay, and there there probably are several animes that describe uh, the rise and fall of the AI and how we use that and how it was our aid with certain things and how eventually that was corrupted. But like for most people right now in this time time sphere, uh, the Matrix movies. They're going to be really good about uh, giving you information, info about that. And uh, the Animatrix, the Animated Matrix uh, little short films, that, that shit is fucking gold. That, that's going to really cue you in on uh, where we've been with this and then the, the rise and destruction of it. Essentially because of power and a need to control. But you can go even farther with it and like uh, Star Trek and like uh, the new uh, Star Trek Discovery kind of thing and integration like that with uh, tech, that kind of technology. But that's, that's that's essentially a dumbed down technology. It's a prosthetic of what the natural human form can do in and of itself. But also what we can create. We can create living ships. <clears throat> and uh, there's no metal. <laughs> There's no metal involved with these ships. Just so you know. These ships are very much organic and they very much integrate with the human form in that they accentuate our ability to open up portals. 
That's as far as I'm going to go right now with that. Okay. <laughs> January of next year is not too far away. It's like uh, 10 months, give or take. So uh, that's where uh, that dream left me. And uh, with, with a very positive sense that the more we can manifest yes. the positive sense within our lives and our everyday and every way, the better things are just going to get. Better and better, really. Of course, you're going to be challenged. Mutate, where are you? You in America? You know, so if you're in America, when the, the you know, spring comes in the next few weeks and I head back to the deep green, you can come visit. You know, all of you are invited. Just have to be your better self. You just have to. It's not a party. When you... uh, okay. <laughs> and that message was essentially why, uh, where I was inspired to uh, make this video essentially is when I start to uh, visit people like this is the message that I want to uh, share is that yeah we're gonna have good times and uh, and essentially this kind of uh, brings to mind whenever uh, the Mayan Jin went and visited Zen Atman and uh, how that went. So I wanted to make it clear whenever I visit people, yes, we can have good times. Yes, we can, you know, potentially quote unquote party, but What I am about is the work, the inner work, the deep healing. So it's very much going to be a shamanic experience whenever I'm around certain people, uh, whenever we're just one-on-one, -on -one, whenever we can really get down to it and... still the mind and connect with the heart and get to work on the inner shit get there you have to be uh, willing and ready to work yes you know, to create to co-create with love if you're just there to be a train boat you're not welcome in the UK but I've come over so you know Tell me about yourself. Where do you live in the UK? So, yeah. I'm all about having fun and having a good time, but more than that, like, within, you know, having that good time, I'm about awareness and realization of the inner landscape that is going on that most of us aren't aware of, aren't aware of what's running our outer landscape, of why things are the way they are in our so-called outer perspective or perceptions of the world. So yeah, that's basically, that's basically it for this one. Um, just, an, just another reminder that as you're waking up, as you're becoming aware of things, Realize that most people aren't 
aren't going to be able to open themselves up to to hear what you're saying. They're so caught up in the rat race and in the dogmatic bullshit. The illusions that have, they have been taught to believe in. That they will actually def defend those things. Because, because if they don't, then that means that they have to actually start going within themselves. And asking the real deep questions. And that is uh that shatters your belief structures and you have to do that if you want to get real but that's also a painful process and it's scary to start out doing that in that venture so most people are going to push away from that and project their ignorance onto you uh, if you present them with with truth like, just raw truth. So, if you do want to, you know, present someone with with some of these things, some of your inner standings, I recommend that you do so in a way that you understand, you understand where they are at. So you work with the level of understanding, of understanding that they have and you kind of help them take a step by step to get there if if you so choose to if you uh, really want to help that person otherwise you know you you can just do your thing and if you feel like just go with the feeling you know Sometimes we are in modes where we we have less tolerance of the ignorance that is everywhere, and it's just not worth our time and energy in that moment. In other times, we do have the uh, the stored capacity and energy to engage. And we realize that the person or individuals that we are engaging with will actually give enough time, enough uh, perception, perceptual awareness to where they will entertain some of the ideas a little bit and think for themselves. Realize... Are you talking with someone who is capable of thinking for themselves or not? If not, don't waste your time. It's your time, a quote unquote time. Time is what you make of it. You create it. Uh, time is an illusion, so you create your energy. So if you want to want to give your energy to someone, that's that's up to you. So just tr just try to be more cognizant of. Is this person going to get it? You know, and maybe they won't get it as immediately. But uh, you know, you can kind of tell if this is a type of person that will think upon it, that they will uh, come back to it maybe eventually, and be like, "Hmm, you know, maybe you had a point there." So uh, yeah, it's all about energy management. How you choose to engage with it. And becoming more and more acute and adept at how you utilize your energy within and without. But it always starts with within. So the better you get at Attuning and engaging with the inner knowingness, the truth within, then you're going to be able to not just conceptualize it, but 
bring it forth in message, in story, in song, in art, in any kind of form. You're going to be able to do that with uh, more fluidity and flow and grace and in communion with love. And you don't need to worry about how your message is coming off whenever you're in these states. Don't allow your mind to second guess your heart. Go with the heart. Go with the flow. And know that you're not alone. You were never alone. And it's all a choice. It's what you choose to see and what you choose to believe in. It is your experience. So choose your experience wisely. Peace.